In this video, we're going to talk about the job of managing work in progress and how it relates to the other jobs of deciding. One of the most important decision points happens every single day during the daily stand-up. And this is where, as you probably remember, all your team members answer these questions here about their work. And if they have questions and they want to talk with each other about a detail or somebody else wants to talk with them, they take those things offline. With the kind of team sizes we've talked about between five to 10 people, this meeting should run 10 to 15 minutes. If it runs longer, you're gonna probably run into problems of people getting bored and not being really engaged. And so this is a place where, particularly around this last question of, you know, am I stuck, am I struggling with something, that hopefully your team is self-organizing, your team members are helping each other, and this is an important point where you're helping yourself to manage work in progress. Now, um, let's talk about how this works for basically getting material ready for a release. And if you need to know that in advance, we talked about kind of these, these two boards here as being pretty typical of the way someone might manage their work in progress. So, if we have on the left here, we've got some idea, and all the way on the right here is we have this working software. Between these two boards, we deal with this. This one deals with kind of preparing ideas and getting ready for implementation, and this one deals with actually managing ideas through a specific iteration of one to six weeks. Let's look at a little more detail at this product backlog and, and how we get ideas ready to be implemented. We've talked about that, but here we'll go into a little bit more of the specific housekeeping. So this starts with idea, and then I've also put in a separate column, which may or may not be the, the right thing for you. With requests, these are basically externally generated ideas about things the product could do that would make sense. And then I made a separate column for discovery. These are things where the customer proxy, product owner, wh whoever is the lead on this, and not necessarily by themselves, but they're the lead on this, is making the decision that, you know, hey, this, this thing here might be a good idea, but we really need to go out and learn more about it and either texture it out or kind of preliminarily validate whether this problem that we'd be solving with this really exists. And then finally, this last column is the product backlog. Now, in Agile, we do not, we at least try to avoid obliging ourselves to specific future content because we believe that by working in short iterations where we're constantly looking at whether we're achieving the right thing and what's important right now is better than trying to make the perfect plan, that question about, look, we need to know for X purpose what we're going to release in 3, 6, 12 months, that, that will come up and there will be illegitimate and legitimate reasons for it but the illegitimate ones you may need to deal with and the legitimate ones you, know, you, you need to work through. So it's very common that in this product backlog item here, everything should still be sorted by priority from top to bottom. And it's very common that a subset of the working team will sit down and, and have a grooming meeting for this product backlog. And this has a couple purposes. One is to prep for the sprint backlog, but two, is to answer questions that you may have about long-term planning by going through these and saying, all right, well, you know, how would we approach this? And what is a very rough estimate based on how well this story matches other types of similar stories that we've done in the past? I mean, the, the best estimates are going to come not from future predictions, but from being able to look at historical velocity. And this is a thing that teams find themselves needing to do. It's very common. You'll probably do it. One of the things that's important is that this doesn't result in the idea that, well, you know, we all, we, we have our average that we finish an iteration is X. So, you know, if an iteration goes below X, that's cause for alarm. The team's doing a bad job. I mean, that's just not realistic that in the, you know, short intervals that you're always going to conform to that average. People have bad weeks. Certain stuff turns out to be harder. External things can happen that slow down the work. So, um, this is a useful and, and, you know, generally legitimate approach to answering those questions, but you want to make sure that it's, it's not generating an artificial set of constraints around what everybody's doing because that will start to impede and, and destroy the goodwill and the trust and the discretion that the team feels that they have to do what they, they think makes sense. We learned about the courage value as a value of XP, for example. If you, you know, 
push the team to an artificial average that'll diminish that, that courage because they don't feel empowered to do what they think makes sense. Those are some ideas about prepping the product backlog. And in the next video, we're going to talk about how this moves to individual sprints and how we manage work in progress on those.